talked about source codes earlier in the course. Today we're going to start talking about error correcting codes. So, um, Shannon uh, described, so quote Shannon in his uh, channel coding, in the proof of the channel coding theorem, Shannon described random code books. So in other, uh, in other words, we formed a code book basically by creating a, a very large matrix with uh, n columns and two to the n r rows, where each row was a code word. And how we created that code book was we selected every element of that matrix randomly. Um, so this is obviously impractical. Because there's no guarantee that a given code, word, code book will be good. And also, um, uh, no way, there's no way to efficiently. encode or decode such a code. Um, so there's no guarantee that any given code book is good. Remember, I mean, it makes sense that if you're selecting code books randomly, there's some chance, uh, even possibly a large chance, that that code book will be bad. Um, all we guaranteed from the channel coding theorem was that if you do random codebook selection, um, there exists codebooks that are good, that are selected randomly. Um, and that was based on the average argument. On average, the probability of error goes to zero, so there must exist at least one good codebook. Um, there's no way to efficiently encode or decode, so how would you encode? Basically, you would take your message, numbered one to two to the nr, and you would find the row of that matrix that corresponded to it and transmit it. Um, so the encoding operation is already, already has exponential complexity in it. Uh, in other words, you have to store all of the 2 to the nr code words. So as n increases, the complexity of storing the code book uh, increases exponentially. Similarly, how would you decode such a code? Well, the decoder we used was um, the typical set decoder, which we use because it's easy to analyze, but again, it's not, um, it's not easy to implement in practice. You would have to compare what you receive with every code word, in, uh, with every code word individually to see if it's uh, jointly typical. Um, so in, in, in all of these cases, although Shannon's contribution was brilliant uh, by suggesting that um, there exist good codes, um, he, he gave us absolutely no clue how to, um, how to find them or how to, how to use them practically. So this, is, this question is going to occupy us for the remainder of our time together. What are good codes and how do we design them? So the first class of code that we're going to look at is called um, the linear block code. So our notation here uh, is confusingly similar to the notation we use for uh, in the proof of the channel coding theorem, we're going we're to call things nk codes. So remember, previously we were talking about two of the nr n codes. nk now means we have k 
pay information bits. K information bits, basically what that means is 2 to the power of K messages. So they can be enumerated in, in K bits. So, uh, for example, a 7-4 code, what we would do is we would take 4 information bits, so a 4-bit message, and map it to A seven bit code word. What's interesting about linear block codes? interesting about this is that these operations form what's called a finite field. In fact, this particular finite field is a special name called GF2. Is it a Galois field? Yes, Galois field. Um, what that means, there is a rich literature about what uh, fields are, but basically a, a finite field is um, a set and two operations, usually called plus and times, where um, basically this is the set, the set of letters, plus and times, where the operations are closed under, or excuse me, the set is closed under the operations. Um, the, um, the operations are invertible, the operations have identity elements, uh, so here the identity element is 0 for plus and 1 for times. And um, the plus operation distributes over the multiplication operation. So in other words, a finite field is basically a sandbox to play in mathematically uh, where everything works the way it does in, um, in, in normal operations. So in, in other words, anything you can do with plus and times in this in, in 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 this scheme, works the same. Uh, the rules work the same way as they do in in the real numbers of the integers. So in other words, things like this, a times b plus c is equal to a times b 